two friends, Alan Dale and Jerry Carew, who grew up just a few streets apart in St. John's East End, have been separated by Canada's geography for three decades. They came together virtually during the pandemic to chat about like-minded interests. Alan lives in PEI and Jerry in Newfoundland. Thriving in remoteness has been a common theme for both of them during the pandemic. Gale Force wins. The podcast is the result. Hello, folks. My name is Jerry Carew. Myself and Alan Dale created GaleForceWinds.com as a means to share some positive stories about people's survival, about people thriving in remoteness. We are honored on December 29th to have Tina Smith. I'm going to show a little excerpt of Tina's meeting with us, her conversation is very difficult. It's about her son Kirk who was serving in Afghanistan and on December 30th 2009 he lost his life in an IED explosion. Tina's story while being while very challenging we feel will move you. Again this is this is a tough story but we applaud Tina for her courage to share it with us. For those who don't know, I'll let you tell the story, but on December 30th, 2009, uh, something happened to your family that I'd like you to talk about. Okay. Um, It was kind of one of those very um, tumultuous days, a very emotional day, because um, my youngest son um, turned 22 on December 30th, 2009. I didn't know so, that. Um, you, you celebrate the birth of all your children on their birthdays, whether you live with them or far away from them. So, you know, so everybody's excited. It's Jim's birthday. Um, and given, given the time difference between uh, where I live here in Arizona and where Jim lives back in Nova Scotia, and then, of course, where Kirk was stationed in Afghanistan, um, I put in basically a a full day at work, Um, came home, wasn't feeling good, had been out of sorts all day, all day, all day, just, just really wasn't, really wasn't up to par, Um, ended up having to go to the emergency room because I broke out in this really, really awful rash, and I kept thinking there's something really wrong, you know, you have that sense all day, so I got back from the emergency room. Uh, my husband went to pick up my prescription. I, so I, I laid down to wait for him to come back. And then I had the phone call that came. So it was about 10 o'clock that night when the, when the call came that Kirk had been killed. Um, the, the, it was his girlfriend who called me. Um, but in, in effect, Kirk had put myself and her father as the people to to be contacted so um by the time they got a hold of of felicia's dad and then he got to felicia's and she then she's the one who called me so and i i think uh, you know until this day i'm still i'm coming up into the 11th year anniversary of kirk being killed and i i can still hear her voice you know with with that long drawn in you know Tina, and as soon as as soon as I heard her, I knew what had happened. I remember uh, saying, "I have to call my other two children right. because I don't want them to hear this from somebody else." Right. 